Welcome back. So in the last video, what we saw <clears throat> was essentially how dynamics, linear dynamical systems change under some invertible coordinate transformation from x coordinates to z coordinates. Uh, they basically turn into, you know, instead of a, b, and c, we have these a hat, b hat, and c hats, which are simple functions of my original dynamics here. And we also saw how that transformed my Gramian. So my new controllability Gramian in these new coordinates is this expression in terms of my old Gramian. And my new observability Gramian looks like this also. So I want to work through a really simple example. And I should point out um, all of this balance model reduction really started with this uh, very, very important seminal paper uh, by Moore in, I think, 1981. Very great paper. You should all go read it. Uh, it's a classic now. Basically, he laid the foundation for the fact that there are these transformations that have this property of balancing my Gramians, making these equal and diagonal. And then he showed you how to actually do it with a real system. And then he showed us how to do it with data. So everything we're doing is kind of in the spirit of more 1981. Uh, I believe this is an IEEE transactions on automatic control paper, but don't quote me on that. Um, so as a really simple example, I just want to show you kind of what we would be doing here to balance these. Let's start with a really, really simple example in x coordinates. We're going to have, um, good, OK, DDT of x1, x2 equals, and I'm going to make this uh, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 10. So I'm going to make this a decoupled dynamical system just because it's easier to, to think about. Okay, We don't have to do this, but it's much easier uh, if I do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a system state that's 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the plus 3 u. So notice that my first state is much harder for you to control than my second state. It's like u impacts the first state way, way, way more uh, aggressively. And then I'm going to have my measurement y equals 10 to the 3, 10 to the minus 3. So in this case, it's the exact opposite. Notice um, that my first state is way easier to measure than my second state. This is minus 3, this is plus 3, OK? So this is just a uh, kind of really exaggerated uh, toy system. In fact, this is basically modified from an example that Moore gave in his 1981 paper. OK, so what I could do, a very simple balancing transformation. If I, if I went through, I would find that, that the x1 state is, the x2 state is super controllable and the x1 state is super observable, basically. Okay, so these would be kind of perpendicular Gramians where x, x2 is much more controllable than x1, and x1 is much more observable than x2. And this simple example is going to show us how a T matrix could actually make this balanced and find a state that's, mo that's equally controllable and observable. So the, the state we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, z, this is just a super simple, z1, um, and z2, z1 is going to equal 10 to the 3 times x1, and z2 is going to equal 10 to the minus 3 times x2. This seems just ridiculously simple. And you could write this as a matrix if you wanted. I could say this is z equals uh, 10 to the 3, 0, 0, 10 to the minus 3 times x. And I could invert that to get t. OK, this is a t matrix. This is t inverse. What this is doing, all I'm doing is rescaling x1. I'm making it 1,000 times bigger. And I'm rescaling x2 to make it 1,000 times smaller. That's all I'm doing. That's what the t matrix does, is it just rescales my state. But what we're going to find is that in those new z coordinates, we actually get balanced dynamics. The inputs and the outputs are somehow balanced. So let's write this uh, ddt of z. And I'm pretty sure we can just write this down, uh, z2, so what's ddt? OK, ddt of z1 is um, my dynamics don't change, OK? Because even though I pick up a 10 to the minus 3, I also have a 10 to the minus 3 over here. So those cancel out. Um, so my dynamics don't change. My A matrix stays exactly the same. You can verify, you can go through this procedure and figure out that your A matrix doesn't change because it's diagonal and this is diagonal. OK, so nothing changes. Um, this is z1, z2. But what's going to be dramatically different are these b hat and c hat uh, vectors. So this is where it gets really interesting. Uh, 
And I'm going to just uh, write this all out. OK, so u now affects. What I did was I made this x1 state, I multiplied it by 1,000. OK, so now um, I'm amplifying x1 by a factor of 1,000. And so essentially what that does, if you go through this t inverse b, is it makes this 1,000 times bigger. And I made x2 1,000 times smaller, it makes this 1,000 times smaller. So what this does to my b matrix is 1, 1. And I want you to actually go through, I'm going fast, I want you at home to go through and take these ABC matrices, and this is T inverse, and compute T, and then compute A hat, B hat, and C hat, and verify that what I'm doing here is correct. Okay, I'm just kind of taking this for granted. Similarly, if I make this one, um, if I scale this one up and this one down, um, because X1 is the inverse of T, I have to like, divide z1 by 1,000 and divides and multiply z2 by 1,000, these also get balanced to 1 and 1. Long story short, what we're finding is even if I had dynamics that looked terribly unbalanced, right? this is as bad as it can get. This mode was ultra controllable and this mode was barely controllable. And the opposite was true. This was very, very observable and this was barely observable. This was just an artifact of how I chose to write x. Maybe I wrote, um, I don't know, x1 in millimeters, and I wrote x2 in kilometers. That was stupid. So what z does is it writes them both in meters. Does that make sense? x1 up here was written in, millimeter, in uh, millimeters. x2 was written in kilometers. So these numbers just looked artificially off. What I do is I coordinate transform so that now everything's in meters. I multiply this by 1,000, I divide this by 1,000. And when I write them in meters, I get these balanced dynamics where now x1 and x2 are equally controllable and observable. Okay? That's kind of an extreme example, but this is just a cartoon of what we're going to be doing. And I wanted to show you this on a 2x2 two two decoupled linear system because eventually what Moore did he showed how you could do this for a thousand by thousand or million by million system where the intuition is a little bit less obvious. So this is for building intuition. Now we're going to scale this up to really big systems. We're going to design a T matrix that balances my Gramians. That's coming up next. Thank you.